Welcome back, Shaloners, and welcome, Rihanna Navy. I don't really understand why that's your guys' um, like fandom name. I think we can do better. Reanimators? Reanimators? That doesn't make a lot of sense. I'll keep working. Anyway, you guys asked for this video for like a million years, and today we're doing it. Confidence and love and life lessons from the queen, the actual queen, Rihanna. And not just that, what to do if you say you don't even care about Rihanna, if you keep getting the feedback or the sense or the sense intimidated by you and you don't understand how to be the alpha bad bitch that you are and not intimidate guys. How can a girl be alpha and feminine at the same time? I'll break it down because I've been there and so is Rihanna. I mean, basically, her and I are the same person, obviously. But just want to remind you guys, if you have a love question, you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, find me on the Instant Go app. My username is ShallonXO and click chat to get connected right away. And be sure and follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO where I let you guys vote for the next video topic. And that's right, <laughs> my podcast, Girl on Top, where I answer the best questions you guys submitted over the course of the week. So let's talk Riri, right? Okay, so first I'm gonna do a psychological dive of Rihanna because that's what we do here at the Chalantourage. And then I'm gonna talk about how you can take those lessons and be less intimidating to dudes, okay? Because that was feedback that I feel like I was getting constantly, like literally until I was like 27, I was just like, I'm intimidating to guys. I, I don't get like, I would get like second, third dates, but I wasn't getting relationships. I was getting laid but I wasn't getting dated. And there is a big, big difference. So Rihanna, I said in my last video about Kylie Jenner, which is what, you know, kind of ramped up this topic into high gear, that Kylie and Rihanna are cold and warm blooded animals in terms of self-esteem. What does that mean? I believe that like, okay, so you know an animal is a cold blooded animal. Ooh, there's thunder. Um, a cold-blooded animal like a snake, they rely on their outside environment to keep them alive. They cannot regulate inside. That's like Kylie Jenner with her self-esteem, which is why she has to post pictures of herself constantly and they're fully edited. Her entire human body is barely a human body anymore. That's edited because she doesn't have this core of self-esteem. And what do I always say about confidence? Confidence is quiet. Confidence is quiet. Wealth is quiet. Power is quiet. Fitness is even quiet. You know, you see like really fit girls or really cute girls and they're dressed like so casually and they look so good and you're just like, ah. And you see girls who are like a little on the trashy side and it's like hair, makeup, belly chain, thumb rings, blah, 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 anklets. Anklets, girls, no, no. It's very Florida Georgia line concert nosebleed seats. Just don't go there. So Kylie strikes me as a very cold-blooded animal. And because of that, she is always going to need constant feedback from the world around her. And that's going to make her really susceptible to bad people because they are going to see that weakness as quickly and easily as I see it and want to manipulate her. Fake friends. Mm, Jordan. I mean, so Kylie strikes me as a cold-blooded animal, which means she's always going to need feedback and constant reinforcement from her environment because she doesn't have self-worth, because she never did that work. If you want more info on this, check out that video I just did on plastic surgery. It's pretty good. Rihanna, on the other hand, is a warm-blooded animal. And as we know from the animal kingdom, a warm-blooded animal doesn't need its environment. Human beings are warm-blooded. Mammals are warm-blooded. We regulate ourselves. And if you look at Rihanna and how she behaves and how she interacts with the world, it's very, I'm a self-contained unit. She's not tweeting all the time. She's not posting a million selfies. She's not out at every event. She's not going on these like over the top publicity stunt vacations that are like some like bizarre tax write off. She does her and that's it. She doesn't need to tell you that she's a bad bitch. Speaks for itself. She doesn't need to constantly post selfies to get feedback that she's pretty. She knows. She doesn't really care if the rest of you know, she knows. And I'm like, how did she get here? Because I first like, I mean, I was like a Rihanna fan, but I think she kind of like zoomed into the spotlight so much when Chris Brown beat the shit out of her. You know, that's when I was kind of like, oh, I, I'm becoming like very aware of Rihanna, you know, and I kind of like was following her. I was like a Rihanna stan after that because 
I was also in an abusive relationship. And I think a lot of us have been. And it was with my high school sweetheart. No, 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 no. Not when I was in high school. It was after. We ended up, we broke up at the beginning of college because he slept with my <clears throat> good friend the day after he took my virginity. Then we got back together. And uh, turns out he, right before we got back together the second time, he slept with my high school, my actual best friend. <laughs> that, was, that was great. But I, I still plowed ahead with the relationship because I have to learn everything the hardest of hard ways. And yeah, we were like 25. And one night he, I like said something to piss him off. He, he called me a cunt at a business dinner, like with his business associates. And I was like, and everyone was like, like mic drop. And I was like, all right, well, you're short and you're losing your hair. So you want to go there? And he, he dragged me out of the restaurant by my hair. Thanks everyone for coming to my defense at that dinner. Thanks guys. And dragged me into the hotel elevator and beat the shit out of me. I mean, pounding my head on the floor, choking me. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to fucking kill you. How could you say that? How could you say, I'm going to fucking kill you. And the hotel threw me out. Threatened to call the police on me because it was his hotel room. And this happened after... Rihanna's thing and I remember after Rihanna and Chris and how they were still together me and so many people were like what and I remember losing a lot of respect for her I'm like girl I okay because I mean you knew that that incident before the, the Grammys that wasn't the first time he beat her up you know I, I strongly doubt that I strongly doubt it but you know what let's say that it was because it was the first time my boyfriend had hit me I'd never even like I'd known him half my life. I'd known him since we were 14. And I just didn't think he was capable of this. And so I was like, oh, Rihanna, whatever, you're staying with him. And then my boyfriend beat me up and I was like, I get it, I get it. And I was ashamed of myself for being ashamed of her. When someone you love does that to you and it's such, it's like this seismic shift from who you, knew them to be, you have no other choice to be like, I really did do this. I really did take it so far and piss him off so bad that he reacted like this. I mean, like, yeah. And because that's what he tells you, I shouldn't have done that. But you made me so mad, you know? And you're like, oh my God. And then you think I'm not the one who needs help. He needs help. He's the sick one. Like, and she did that song. Um, oh, what is it called? Funny, I'm the broken one. Funny, you're the broken one, but I'm the only one who needed saving. Do you remember that song? Why am I blanking on the name? Ugh, I'll, it'll come to me later. But I feel like that song was all about that. And I remember that line. I was like, oh my God, that's exactly how I felt. Like, he's the hurt one, but I'm the one who needs saving. No, 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 no. I have to stay here and help him get better. And I remember... Like all my friends from high school found out about it because I told them and were gossips. And I, my best guy friend from high school, I was like telling him that is like my reasoning for why Jack and I were staying together. And he's like, he was ironically volunteering at a battered women's shelter, like at that time. And he's like, bitch, do you have any idea how many times a day I hear that story? He's gay. So he talks like, you know, he's not just like a straight dude being like, bitch, like making it so much worse. I surround myself with abusive men. No, <laughs> but He's like, I hear that story all day long. And I was like, because oh, I thought I'd stumbled upon something revolutionary. Like, whoa, like my situation is so unique and so complicated. I don't have anything in common with these battered women who are just like, they're with a genuinely bad guy and they can't see it and they can't leave. Oh, there's lightning. Um, and that, that like woke me up. And so since then, I felt very like, like heart sister with Rihanna. And I can't help but think that she had a similar shift to what I did, which was never again, never, ever again. I will murder someone if they try to come at me like that. I will murder them and I will do my time with a smile on my face. You are not coming for me that way. I won't let that chaos into my life. No more Captain save a ho behavior from me. If he's broken, bye, I'm not Mr. Fix-It. So I feel like I saw a shift in myself and I like to think I saw it in Rihanna as well because again, we are sisters. And that's when she 
like took off. Like I think her persona really solidified in this, she has such a male energy and in like the best way she has big dick energy. She does. I'd let her turn me out. Come on. You know, like she just has this energy that's like, she is an alpha and it is genderless. And yet she has distilled her feminine energy and her seductive power to the point that she's almost weaponized it. Like it is so clear. It is laser focused. And I'm just like, oh, like I'm so in awe of her. When people are like, Beyonce is the queen. I'm like, Beyonce is kind of a simpleton. She is talented, but so is Rihanna. And Rihanna is a bad bitch. Like you want Rihanna on your team for sure. So how does Rihanna move through the world and get guys being such a baddie? And you know what I want, what, you know what I want to talk about? Drake. Soft, whack Drake. Because you know who is awful? Chris Brown. You know who I kind of think is worse? Drake. Here's what that bitch does. He pines for Rihanna, uh, ostensibly his true love, right? Never shuts up about it. Goes for the awkward kiss in public at all times. And then she has the audacity to simply not love him back. The audacity. And what does he do? Collaborate with Chris Brown. Can you imagine a bigger slap in the face? I was seething, seething when I saw that he was posting he wanted to do a collab with Chris Brown. Fuck you, Drake. Fuck you. Like, this is how you act when someone rejects you? You go collaborate with their abuser? I bet Chris sexually assaulted Rihanna. If you'll hit a woman, you'll rape her. Let's be honest here. And if you will stand by the side of a man who would do that to a woman you loved. How are you any different? How are you different? You don't even have the guts to live out loud like that, to be like, I'm a terrible rapist shit bird person. You're just like, you're like LeFou from Beauty and the Beast, like cowering near Gaston, complicit in his crimes, but like not even alpha enough to do them yourself. Just, it's, it's sickening. And I don't want to say that like abusive men are alpha. They're not. They're the most beta men out there. But you know what I mean? It's like, he just, they're both sickening. They're both garbage people. Just launch them into outer space and have them orbit the earth far away from the rest of us. So I also think Rihanna witnessed that and was like, never again. But fortunately she's found love with a Saudi billionaire. Girl, I love it. I actually don't know really anything about the relationship. They keep it so low key. And again, confidence is quiet. I keep my relationship with my boyfriend really low key. And it's always funny when like the haters like come on my channel. They're like, you're stupid. You're stupid. You're going to die alone. No wonder you're single. Honey, I'm not single. Catch my boyfriend on Instagram. He's a smoke show. Okay. But I don't need to flaunt it. I know he's hot. I know he loves me. I know I love him. I don't need to live out loud like that. And I don't need to show off the fact that like, you guys, some, a boy likes me. No shit a boy likes me. Look at me, listen to me. I have a lot to offer. So do you. But I look at Kylie where it's like, Travis Scott, baby bought me a, like a $35,000 bracelet. Oh, is that to make up for the fact that he never stops cheating on you? Is that the price of your soul? That's good to know. Mine's a little bit higher. Add a few zeros to the end. Sorry, KJ. So what can we learn about Rihanna? And not just Rihanna, but how to be that alpha bitch and be proud of yourself and not shy away from your accomplishments, but also not come across as intimidating. Because like I said at the beginning, this is how I spent my 20s. Let me walk you through a date with Shallon at 24, okay? First of all, I show up with hoops probably six times a side, big as possible extensions, lashes, long nails. And yes, I still have those things now. We'll get there. I was in like a bandage dress, you know, tight, tits up, like not body glitter, but you know, the shimmery lotion, rings, sky high heels, Chanel bag. Bah, 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 bah. I mean, I was dressed like I was going to One Oak in Vegas. Did not matter where the date was. Did not matter how well I knew him. Did not matter. That was my default setting. And yes, like, that, I mean, that kind of is, like, I am sort of that tacky bitch and I own it. But again, we'll get there. And then on the date, okay, by the time two or three drinks has passed, you know 
everything about me, everything about me. You know everything I've ever done in my career. You know all about where I came from. You know every single goal, every single milestone I want to hit. Bah, bah, bah. I'm a two-time published author. I'm an editor. Barack Obama follows me on Twitter. I will still brag about that for the rest of my life, so buckle up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Bah, 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 bah. Info dump. Bah. And the guy, looking back, sat across the table like, sort of this deer in the headlights. And just for good measure, just for good measure, you know what I always decided to add it in there? How I didn't really believe that marriage is a good thing. Marriage doesn't work. Why not have like free love? Monogamy's stupid and you know, we're meant to get out there. And then he went from to this phase. Hmm, hmm. His eyes would narrow, he'd get this sort of Captain Hook look on his face. Cause you know what he was thinking? This is the last date I'm ever gonna take this bitch on. From now on, we're meeting at my house at mm, 11.30 at night on a Tuesday, and guess what we're gonna do? And that's the only thing I'm gonna use this girl for. Because number one, she's overwhelming. She never shuts up. I know everything about her life. Number two, she has set up an adversarial construct. And number three, she's not the girl you take home to mom. She's not the girlfriend kind. She's the pump and dump kind. And I, on my side of the table, was like, the date's going great. It's going great. Wonderful. And guess, guess how often I'd hear from them? Not really at all, right? So to the few guys who actually did decide to move forward and date me after that for whatever self-destructive reason, we got into the second point that I mentioned, an adversarial relationship. Because, okay, we're dating. And then like, I couldn't understand why the guys would be like, not happy for me if I got a promotion or I came home from a bad day at work and they're like, well, I don't know what to tell you. And I was like, oh, like I'm happy for you when something good happens. I'm your support system when you need help. Why are you like this? I couldn't understand that I, with that info dump, which basically translates to an ego challenge to a man because it's like, well, what are you bringing to the table? What are you doing? Bam, bam, bam. When I come at them with a resume, they feel like they need to respond in kind. And then we're not a collaborative relationship. We're adversaries. We're competitors. And I would think that over and over and over again with the guys I would date during that time. It's like, why are they so competitive with me? I'm not competing with them. But when I would go on dates with this in your face attitude and persona and bad, just like so loud, that's exactly what I became. And I mean, yes, these were like weak egoed men, like for sure, but I had a hand in it as well, for sure. Because like, and I couldn't get this, I couldn't understand what I was doing and see it until I put it into a different context. And I remember like, I, I woke up and I was like, what if I was doing these behaviors, but physically? What if I showed up on a date and instead of being like, I'm an author, I'm an editor, I'm an MTV reality star, I'm a YouTuber, la! What if I was like, I've got six pack abs. You want to arm wrestle? Rah! I would have a very clear sense of how bad that is, right? If a guy showed up and you're like, oh, this guy is intimidating. We would know that that's not a good thing. Like if a guy is intimidating to a woman or to a man, you realize that person probably is a weakling. That's why they have to like storm around and be a bully. And also like, well, no shit. People don't want to be around them. And it's not because the people are like weak and it's like, well, they just can't handle him. It's like, they don't want to handle him. And boys didn't want to handle me. I know what you're probably thinking. Like, okay, so I have to pretend like I'm not really well educated, that I don't have a good job, that I don't have goals and ambitions. No, that's what I said too. And that was my justification whenever anyone, my mom, would call me on this throughout like my entire 20s. I was like, oh, so I just have to dial myself down and minimize to please the ego of a man who can't handle me. Well, well, well. Shallon, you full of shit. Looking back, I can see so clearly that what I was acting like was all this confidence was nothing more than insecurity. It was armor. It was armor. Because here's what would happen when I would date someone. I would go in like guns a blazing, pew, I do this, pew, I do that, I wanna be that, pew, pew, pew. 
going guns a blazing. And then we go on a few dates and by like date number four, my actual self would reveal, which is very low key. I'm actually really pretty chill. I love all sorts of weird domestic things. I love the Golden Girls, and Murder She Wrote, and baking and needlepoint and the rodeo and chicken show competitions. Like I'm very kind of like down home. And I would reveal that. And do you know what the guys would do? She's in love with me. She's in love with me. Because not only had I set up this very black and white thing that this felt like a bait switch, you know, like it just who is this girl now, you know? But I mean, guys are, guys are stupid and they can't accept that women have duality. Women have, ooh, do you hear that thunder? That's thunder. They can't accept that there's a lot of different aspects to women. You know, she, she's not just the slut or the good girl. You know, she's not the career woman or the mom. There's a lot to us. And I led so strong with one aspect that it made it really difficult for them to conceptualize. That there was those soft and sweet elements. Things changed for me when I changed. And this, listen to me, this is the gift and the curse. You can't change the whole wide world, you can only change yourself. And when I look back on my dating history and it was like, why did this same pattern keep repeating again and again? Gee, I don't know, who was the common denominator there? It was me, obviously. And I didn't want to accept that because I didn't want to accept that I was wrong. It was way easier to what? Play the victim, right? I wanted to play the victim in my own life. I wanted to go to brunch and bitch about how guys suck. I mean, they do, obviously, but like I sucked too. And so this, like I said, was armor. Because if I was leading with all this like toughness and the spikiness, no one was actually seeing the real me, that soft me that I revealed when I got comfortable. And when I did that, and I like I changed the game of like this relationship the guys left me then, or that, you know, it just took, it shifted. And I felt so wounded because like, oh, I just finally opened up. I decided one time, almost as an experiment to do it differently. I decided to lead with the sweetness because you know what I realized? You know why I knew that how I was on a date was nothing more than insecurity? Because I finally acknowledged that my, my belief was that if I didn't come out of the gate on fire with always going for the joke, always debating the political point, always doing that, then I wasn't going to be enough. How could they possibly know I'm funny if I only say two funny things over the course of an hour instead of 15? How can they know I'm smart if I don't get into a 20 minute debate about Brexit? How can they know that I'm ambitious if I don't rattle off the entirety of my resume to them? I didn't have the faith that my value was apparent to the world. Kylie Jenner. Rihanna doesn't do that. Rihanna doesn't need to. You don't see my value, fuck you, keep it moving. That's her attitude. And when, when I decided to make that my attitude, everything changed, everything changed. And I thought that making that shift would mean I would get meaner, that I would get spikier and feistier, and the opposite happened, I got sweeter because that's the real me. And I was able to let it out in smaller increments. And like, I came across as a completely different person, the real person underneath me, the Shallon that all my friends know, the warm, compassionate, loving, goofy, dorky, funny Shallon, the, the Shallon my friends love, the Shallon you guys love, you know? And part of leading with the sweetness, which is my overall tip for you guys, and Listen, this is not dialing yourself down. This is, this is leading with a different part of you that is already there, that is already so wonderful that everyone already loves because that's going to activate that in him and you guys are going to meet as collaborators, remember, not competitors. Because here's the big overall point I wanna make, is like I thought that I had to lead with all my accomplishments and like the, all of my personality all at once because that was going to make people like me because that was like what I had to offer. And now I've reframed it. My personality, my history, my stories is something you earn access to. I don't give it away. I've done videos before on why I've never sent a nude in my life. And I made the point that like, well, I've never given someone the keys to my car or sent them my debit card number because I know the value of those things. I know to the dollar what they're worth. And I actually know the value of my body. 
I mean, some days it's $10 million, other days it's a buck 50 in unusable Confederate money. It varies, but it has a value. So I don't give it away. And I finally started to see that my personality has a value as well. And so all my funny stories, all my crazy experiences and adventures, you gotta earn access to that now. And you earn it by trust. I need to know exactly who you are. I don't want pictures of my naked body floating out there. And I don't want my stories floating out there. You don't just get to have that. I'm not just gonna serve it to you on a silver platter anymore. And because I no longer felt compelled to shuck and jive and fill every single silence on a date, which is what guys interpret as crazy, because a relationship has a lot of downtime. You know, there's a lot of nights on the couch, watching the office, eating leftover Chinese food. And a guy knows that if a girl's like, <laughs> on a date, like he does not want to be trapped with her all winter in a small dwelling. Because I stopped doing that, I was able to listen more. And not only does that give me much more clarity on who it is I'm dealing with, and now I can smoke a fuckboy out like that, you know, but it also cultivated a persona of the sweetness, the empathy, listening, collaboration, you know, meeting in that warm space, because that's what a relationship is supposed to be. It's supposed to be each person's emotional soft place to fall, the nest, the trust tree, all that. And I was creating a very spiky nest. You didn't want to be in it. You didn't want to go near it. It's not your safe place. So if this is something that you've been having problems with, pull back, reframe, know that you are enough without having to vomit it all out right up front. You don't have to do that. It comes out bit by bit by bit as someone earns it. Like Rihanna, we don't know everything there is to know about her. We don't know where she is at all times, what kind of car she drives, what her house looks like. She meters that out as she sees fit, if ever you earn the access to it. That is her motto, that is her vibe, that needs to be ours as well. And I don't know that she leads with the sweetness, maybe not, but that really did change my life. And it's not weakness, and it's not minimization, it's the opposite. It's I am secure enough in myself to magnify the parts that I feel risky and vulnerable about, my soft emotional underbelly, not this open book thing, but just a little laid back, and a little bit more warm. Warmth is charm is approachability. They're all one thing. So when you can do that, your luck is gonna change because it isn't luck. It's you and it's your behavioral patterns and all of those things are things you can control, but not until you acknowledge them. It took me a long time to do it and I probably missed out on probably some really good relationships. But once I got it, once I made that switch, I met the guy that I married, literally the next relationship because I was finally connecting on a level that was real. I wanna know your guys' thoughts on this. I wanna know what you think about Rihanna. I wanna know if this resonates and pings with you and if you want more videos on this topic, specifically what? And if you wanna talk one-on-one -on -one about this, find me on the Instant Go app, like I said, and click chat. My username is ShallonXO. Also follow me on Insta at ShallonXO for daily wisdom and selfies and all that stuff. And listen to my podcast, Girl on Top, ShallonXO, every place that podcasts are found. Thanks, babies. <laughs>